Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to return to the subject of Unraid and in today's video I'm going to address something that after doing some serious googling myself doesn't seem to have existed and that is a pros and cons list. I want to give you five reasons why you should consider utilizing Unraid as your file system server of choice and five reasons why you might want to remain on the fence and carry on with your true NASs and your Synologies and your QNAPs. What do I mean by the way by there not being a pro and cons? Of course that does exist in lots of places online but for the new entry user into the world of Unraid or someone that is kind of on the fence already utilizing other servers and file systems out there that are looking at Unraid, there isn't much of a direct comparison between them. So that is the hopeful purpose of this video, to compare five big standout things about it for the good and the bad. So let's crack on with number one. Now to say that Unraid is pretty resource friendly would be the understatement of the decade. Unraid can run from something as simple as a USB drive. It can even run from a high speed U um, SD card depending on the system you're going to utilize. And that means that the majority of the system resources that you have can go towards that storage with the OS, that Unraid that you set up uh, on a normal Windows or Linux based system, plug it in, set up your USB, take it out and plug it into your brand new server. The majority of the kind of brains of the outfit, the instructions that are getting given, are being delivered by this USB's parameters early doors. What does that result in? It results in a much more uncluttered approach to your hardware resources there. So whether it is that you're going to be repurposing an old PC that's got the CPU, the MOBO, and the, uh, the you know the uh, memory intact, and you just want to kind of bastardize it and you know symbiotically utilize the existing hardware with your new unraid brain you can do that i talked about it on the channel that you can take advantage of nas systems that are out there in order to just take over and not bother using their os and just plug in this little usb and then suddenly all of that hardware is up for grabs and uncluttered access to a lot of that bare metal architecture whether you're going to be utilizing it for a number of different say docker applications with plex running on unraid surprisingly well given that the brains of the outfit that are delivering the instruction to the cpu technically is running off that usb with that lower resource consumption it also opens the door significantly to allowing you to kind of choose your server quite delicately in terms of power consumption over time within unraid in limit uh, which is a way that you are limited to with a lot of turnkey solutions that kind of force you down a certain road with the hardware consumption and the way you can configure that hardware within your 24 7 server there are hurdles and barriers such as vm um, direct password into bare metal isn't quite as streamlined as you might like but the majority of cases unraid particularly in container form allows you to really better harness the resources to a much more efficient output This next point is actually relatively new to Unraid's latest uh, 6 version, and that is support of ZFS pools natively there. One of the inherent, uh, I think, uh, kind of barriers to a lot of um, the last few years, at least, people considering moving away from free NAS, as it used to be known, or true NAS, looking at Unraid and a lot of that container support and ease and low resource management um, was... Uh, kind of a barrier for them was there was the lack of protection afforded to ZFS there with a lot of the bit rot protection just long term consistency of the ZFS file system there and now it has been rolled in natively although it was available in a slightly modded form again I recommend you check out a couple of uh, Space Invader 1 videos on that I'll try and link to a couple in the description um, but now with native support of ZFS in the latest iteration of um, uh, Unraid 6 means that you are able to better harness those existing pools but also start building up towards those new ones this point sort of piggybacks on my first one but slightly differently and that is you can really cut corners with regards to the hardware at its lowest iteration and again you've got to factor in any kind of uh, dockers or any of that container stuff you're going to play with but you, unraid can run on a single gigahertz core system a recommended four gig of memory for the uh, the main installation for to running all the services of unraid there but i reckon you can get away with two gig and just generally any hardware supported system that can run a linux os there which when it comes to the majority of motherboards there is pretty much total you're laughing you can pretty much run it on very 
baseline level hardware. If you've got an old laptop knocking around that you want to just plug in some drives with, or just an old, real ancient old PC system that may have been running on some uh, an Athlon AMD processor knocking around in a cupboard, you can probably turn that into an Unraid server. And, you know, given that SATA or SATA 3 hasn't changed that much um, over time, and again, even SATA 2 to a degree, if you're going to talk about limitations of performance later on, um, the hardware um, kind of starting point for Unraid is extraordinarily low. And once again, that just factors more and more into that intelligent and efficient hardware resource utilization that is a mainstay back end of Unraid. Next up, let's talk about Unraid expandability and one of the slightly counterintuitive things about the name Unraid, and that is it is not comparable RAID to what you are used to. It actually uses a very unique uh, parity system across the drive that you utilize. So, and again, there is one major downside, which I'm sure a number of you are aware of, that I'll definitely mention in the other half. But when it comes to the drives that are within your unraid groups that you're going to be utilizing there, most of the uh, data that's being written to it goes right the way down to the bit level on a zero or a one. And using a complicated calculation, which can be simplified, by the way, down to a system of odds and evens, it not only means that it can effectively scale up the number of drives within your Unraid groups exponentially, but on top of that, it allows you to start introducing larger drives later on, rather than be restricted the way traditional RAID does for all of the drives inside the groups to be the same capacity there. Again, it's a very unusual methodology that goes into how it does the checks across each individual bit, all the way down, and I'm talking straight to the smallest bit on an odd even calculation, but still nonetheless, that does mean a tremendous flexibility in terms of the drive utilization down the line, and the sheer, the sheer scalability um, afforded to you for small, modest home lab users. Another oft overlooked thing is, of course, the App Center there. And again, I say App Center, it's effectively a container store there with 1,750 odd containers at the time of recording there. And pretty much everything is covered there. If you are looking for something to smartly manage uh, a, a home system there, you can get it there. If you want to uh, create a synchronized system with, say, cloud services out there, it's in there. And of course, things like Plex Media Server and other um, multimedia platforms are rolled in as well because there is such a huge boom of these kind of custom made multimedia centers arriving in container form there. On top of that from within side there you can dig down pretty darn deep into custom servers running within Unraid. If you are someone that does a lot of PC gaming and you've looked at the cost of private servers chances are you'll be able to find um, a private server container creation within that app center of Unraid that you can deploy fantastically quickly. And as long as you've got a half decent bandwidth, boom, you can run your DayZ server from there. And it isn't just Minecraft. There is a huge number of different supported game servers for PC. And with regards to some games out there, uh, console-based service that you can point at afforded to you. So if you wanted to run your own gaming server, take the time to go through that app center and chances are you'll find some very popular pc and again console games with connected pc servers available to you to run your own game servers with your own rules and setup it's very niche utilization but i know there are people out there that utilize unraid for affordable game servers there but Unraid above and beyond its utilization for storage and you know embracing things like zfs um or at least uh, natively as uh, an optional visible point isn't always going to be enough. And alongside those five great things, there are five reasons why Unraid may not be for you. I was always going to raise this point, wasn't I? It was going to be performance. Unfortunately, Unraid does not come anywhere close to turnkey and even OSDIY NASes uh, in the likes of True NAS versus Synology and QNAP and the like in terms of performance because the drives themselves are not being accessed simultaneously the way they are in a normal NAS system there. So unlike the benefits of, say, uh, a RAID um, 5 or RAID 6 or even a RAID 10, where multiple drives or cluster RAID, I should say, that are being read and written to simultaneously, 
it doesn't work like that in Unraid. And effectively, you are writing to one drive with a cloning mechanic at any given time, regardless of the number of drives you're using. It is very linear in its writing operation across the disks that you span. And consequently, even if you take advantage of things like intelligent SSD caching, which can provide improvements, Again, you're only really getting very limited improvements when you look at the number of drives you are utilizing in your spend compared with that of a traditional RAID supported NAS Linux system. And of course, uh, the true NAS one there as well. So bear that in mind if you're looking at Unraid, if you are going to be using performance prohibitive applications and where your storage may serve as a bottleneck regardless of your CPU, GPU memory setup. This next point, I don't think it's anywhere near the attention it should, and, and that is that Unraid is not that user friendly. Now, I've got to stay relative because it is user friendly in a way. Uh, the options are presented very clearly, the configuration is exactly where it's expected to be, and the Unraid GUI in its last few major version upgrades has really seen improvements in how the information is presented to you, particularly when you're talking about a software platform that is so, so DIY it's unreal that no one person's setup is going to be the same as any other, unlike NAS brands where they have a very limited hardware spec to work within, and therefore they can be quite tailored in that fashion. Nonetheless, despite Unraid improving things drastically in the GUI, that you can access there via the uh, network or remotely using their my server mechanic it's still going to be quite an upheaval for a lot of users that are coming off the back of traditional nas systems like these with that chewable friendly kind of windows android os with Unraid, the way things are configured and some of the new terminology that gets rolled in, although it's a lot of one-page splash configuration, unless you're coming off the back of right, rather customized NAS servers to start with, you are going to find Unraid something of an uphill battle in terms of that learning curve, so do bear that in mind. Now, this is one of those points that may become out of date, but I'm not sure it will. And again, this information, at least as far as I checked three or four months ago, seems to be seemingly the same. And that is, you can't really run Unraid on an ARM-based processor. It is processor. It is very, very x86-centric. Now, whether that is VM-related, whether that is because of the compression that is required with instruction to the CPU within an ARM-based processor, V7, V8, call it where you like, even if it's 64-bit, it's still going to be a hurdle. Um, seemingly, Unraid still does not uh, is not supported on these platforms. Now, one of the things that's a real disappointment about that is not only that some people have been able to run it um, on uh, Raspberry Pi via a con you know, convoluted container system there, which again isn't ideal because running Unraid as a VM within another, not great. Um, but on top of that, it is the idea that because of its sheer efficiency in utilization and the fact you can run it on such low spec and that Unraid doesn't really have the performance benchmarks of a lot of the larger NAS systems. It's just a real shame that Unraid, which once again doesn't need a GUI via an HDMI output, by the way, it can be wholly configured and accessed via the network. Even the first time access requires the USB being configured off system first. It's a real shame that you can't plug it directly and run Unraid from an ARM based system that may or may not have a, G, uh, a graphical user interface output there. And of course, the fact that the limitations of storage and Unraid being this light friendly OS and things like Raspberry Pis and ARM based systems, you can get them to be fantastically small and portable. It's just a real shame that Unraid, still at least as far as my knowledge in the time of recording, is not ARM supported. Talking of another Unraid limitation, which seems to be part of the original design of Unraid, which is they're not prepared to change, but maybe at the time of recording, or even the time between recording and publication of this video, it may have changed. That is that root access um, is the only one that can access that main GUI. Full control of the system is limited to one account that you can't delegate superpowers there within the system and all of that power can only be restricted to the root now yes from a security aspect and indeed the architecture of this being designed the way it is it makes a great deal of sense but still nonetheless the the lack of being able to create a secondary access to a lot of that control and limiting it just to that one person account has caused friction sometimes although 
it's understandable it's still not ideal for a lot of user class setups they're beyond the home lab and although unraid is still in a lot of community circles still not considered enterprise you know pure worthy and still home lab plus it's just a real shame that it's still limited to this one door entry point into super user Now, I'm putting this one on at the end, but I'm not really that bothered about it, but I know it bothers some people, and that is Unraid isn't free. If you do want to take advantage of Unraid and install Unraid on your little USB, although you're going to have to buy your server, buy your case, reuse some old hardware that you've got knocking around, maybe you're going to use an old NAS, an old PC or whatever, the actual Unraid software requires a bit of the old buns. Now, when you set it up for the first time, you do get a 30-day trial. So you can download it, set up your USB, test it for 30 days. If it's not floating your boat, you can junk it. But after that 30-day point, you've got one of three options. You can spend $59, and that can support up to six storage interfaces. If you go for the $89 tier, you get up to 12 interfaces there. Or if you go up to $129, you get unlimited there within the hardware spec now the reason i'm not wholly behind calling this a negative point although i will include it in the five bad point for some users is that software's got to be supported and if you want software to develop either it has a much more passive means or, uh, of donation by users which you know let's call it what it is advertising revenue we know as well as anyone here on youtube or you have to go for a paid model there. And they've gone to the trouble of including 30 days of testing, which is pretty darn good, to be frank. But still, nonetheless, don't think Unraid is completely free. It's semi-open source at best, but it ain't open source in the whole. You haven't got to pay the old bunts up front there. But that's really it. This is five reasons why you might want to go ahead and try out or go ahead and fully install Unraid on your system and five reasons why you might want to sit on the fence a little bit longer and carry on doing what you're doing. We will have a follow-up to this video coming soon where we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this and talk about some of the um, operational values of Unraid compared with things like TrueNAS and some of the other NAS brands out there, so I recommend you check that out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, let me know in the comments. If there's any plus or negative you think I've missed or errors throughout this video, let me know in the comments. Use the free advice section over at NAS Compares and the free community forum at Ask NAS Compares and the Discord, of course, to talk to us on there. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.